First off, thank you to everybody that sent in questions. It is so useful to be having these kinds of open, uh, very honest discussions about mental health and symptoms and recovery. Uh, it was also really useful for me when people would give a thumbs up to a question that helped me know which questions there was a bit more interest in or energy around. Uh, I can't answer all of the questions in one video, so I'm gonna break it up into a bunch of different videos. Uh, so stay tuned for more and keep asking questions. And two, if you see questions on there that you wanna hear more about, give it a little thumbs up. Uh, you can post questions underneath this video or the previous video. So I'm gonna get started. Uh, first up is a question from Scott. He's asking about OCD and work. And so Scott says, uh, when I get really busy with work for days at a time, a little stress thrown in the mix, I've become aware, a little too late I might add, that I become obsessed with everything that needs to get done, work, chores, etc., and just keep working away. Before I know it, I'm really exhausted mentally and physically, and then I begin to feel the OCD booger creeping in a little, and then a little more each day. It takes me a couple of weeks to get back to a level playing field again. So what would you suggest to combat this? A stricter schedule, sticking to my core values more. It's fantastic that you recognize how OCD is infecting the way you work. I think that's so important because OCD, it's not just a, a narrow set of symptoms that bothers us, it, it really gets into everything. What that means is that even when we're sitting down to work, even if we don't think that's part of OCD, we end up practicing the kind of compulsive behavioral patterns that are gonna fuel OCD and all the other things that we're anxious about. The benefit to that, recognizing that though, is that when you're working, every time you're spending a moment doing any work, which is a huge chunk of your day, that's an opportunity to practice doing healthy things, practice aligning your actions with your values, that's gonna help you everywhere else in your life where you're building better mental health. So that's first up, really awesome that you're, you're exploring this. You mentioned values there, and that I think is so important. That's something that really helped me. I used to work compulsively all the time. I would push aside all the other things I valued in life. So I'd say, oh, I can't be in a relationship right now. I have to get this work done. It was just about reacting to fear. So you can totally see the OCD patterns at work there, reacting to fears about what others think, or you know, I'm not gonna do something in my life that other people are gonna judge me. And then I force myself to do all of this work on things that I don't actually care about, but I'm afraid somebody else really cares about and they're gonna judge me if I don't do it. And of course, the end result of that is I just ended up really miserable and not doing the things that would actually make me healthy and happy. No matter what you're doing, even if you're doing household chores, take a moment to think about what do I value most in this situation? And to do that, knowing that accomplishing those things is actually going to be what you care about, it's actually going to help you be healthy and happy over the long term, even though in the short term you may feel you need to do something else. It's really, really important to use your values to prioritize work. Two other things that really helped me, and you touched on this a bit when you mentioned scheduling there. So one was learning how to be comfortable with failing and letting certain things fall. So after I've gone through that exercise of prioritizing what I value, uh, it's very possible that there are things somebody else wants me to do that I've now decided I'm not going to do or I'm, I'm just not gonna be able to complete them. So I'm gonna have to have a conversation with that person, uh, express my values, express what I care about, uh, and be okay with them potentially being very upset that I didn't do the things they wanted me to do. And they may think that I failed, they may think I've let them down, uh, but I know over the long term, uh, if that wasn't something that you know was on the top of my you know, list of things that I value, that I'm gonna be much happier and much healthier because I focused on those things that I actually care about. And so part of that is a bit with the scheduling, recognizing that you know when I'm done the things that I value and there's other things I wanna do, like maybe go to the gym or make sure I prepare a healthy meal, uh, that I'm gonna go and do those things. And that may mean um, that somebody else is really angry with me. The other thing that relates to scheduling, I find it's really useful to set uh, goals that don't depend on your judgments about how you feel. Because uh, I could always convince myself, I just need to work a bit more on this, or here's this other thing, I'm just gonna keep working. And it would work and work and work and work. And it's very similar to what happens when we compulsively exercise, and we feel like, oh, I just have to get this right feeling. And so we end up chasing a particular feeling. Uh, inevitably, that leads to being exhausted, being worn out, not actually being able to do our best work, not being productive. So there I find it's useful to really set goals that don't depend on how we feel, and that often means scheduling specific times to do work, saying I'm gonna work from this time to this time, and after that, whether I feel like I'm done or not, I am done. I'm gonna go do these other things that I know are really healthy for me, and I know I really value, 
I know that they're gonna make me happy. So part of it too is being comfortable with saying that's enough. Next up, there's a question here from Kate on recovery. She asks, do you consider yourself recovered from OCD or would you say that it's something you'll always struggle with? Maybe it's both. I've had CBT and do lots of things to keep myself healthy now, but I feel it's probably something I will work on forever and have a weakness to. The simple answer to this is no, I would not consider myself as having OCD. It's something I had in the past um, and it sucked and it was pretty severe and it was totalizing. It took over my entire life. And um, yeah, I don't, but I don't have it now. I don't engage in any compulsions. And so the way, the way I approach OCD is that if you're, if you're not engaging in coping and checking and controlling compulsions as a reaction to uncertainty and anxiety and other feelings you don't like, then, then yeah, you don't have OCD, right? Like I've, I've talked about this in other videos, but yeah, if you, you know, if you almost drowned once and then you learn how to swim so that you don't drown again, we don't label you as a drowner. My mental health is so much better now after having it, had a mental illness uh, than it was before when I was supposedly healthy. Having the experience of overcoming a challenge makes you stronger. But could I go back to having OCD? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, all I would have to do is start to engage in all of the compulsions again, bring back all sorts of unhealthy beliefs and desires uh, and practices that I used to have in my life. Uh, it's totally possible. But I don't think that means I have a chronic illness. See, mental health and fitness is very similar to physical health and fitness. So I exercise, I eat healthy, I sleep, you know, do yoga, all those things. If I stop doing those things, it's perfectly natural for me, it's perfectly natural for me to develop uh, poor physical fitness. Uh, that would be normal. And the more you know, I practice, um, so not doing healthy things and doing lots of unhealthy things, inevitably, uh, I'll probably develop uh, some symptoms that might get labeled as having an illness, maybe metabolic syndrome, heart disease, all sorts of different things like that. I might break some bones, fractures, any number of things. That's a, a totally natural part of not taking care of your body. As well, if we don't take care of our mental health, I mean that in like a very uh, complete sense every day and everything you're doing, it's totally natural uh, to develop lots of symptoms that might get labeled as an illness. So I don't see mental illnesses as necessarily chronic. I was really excited to learn that I could make changes in my life to get over OCD. So I found that very empowering. I was really excited um, that I could make changes in my life to overcome that. Uh, with that empowerment though, comes a, a huge amount of responsibility. If then, of course, if I'm gonna take on that role of improving my mental health and fitness, I, I have to uh, you know, continually uh, take on that role throughout my life or else uh, my mental health will go in the opposite direction that I want it to But uh, really that's a it's a personal choice, and that's just how I approach it. Here's a question from Ashley and Ashley asks once you accept the thoughts do they actually start to go away and So this is a question um, It's always it's always a tricky one to answer but for now. I'm just gonna say maybe Often with questions about OCD, uh, the best answer we can say is maybe, and instead of worrying about finding an answer to that particular question is to focus on uh, doing the healthy things we want to do. If the thoughts are there, they're there. If they're not there, they're not there. That doesn't change the healthy things you can do each day. Uh, but actually, uh, you did ask about uh, motivation. This is a question that came up a bunch of different times um, and it's something that I can go into a bit more detail about. Uh, you asked about it, uh, Jamie, Julie asked about it. So I'm gonna read out Jamie's question. Um, so Jamie says, on one day, it's very clear what I have to do and it's easier than other days. I understand that there are ups and downs to everything, but why is it or what is it that makes it shift? One day, it's easy to adapt that I need to just let anxiety be there and relax and not force it in any way. And I figured out the math in it and actually have better days while having that mindset of acceptance and courage. And then boom, next day it's sort of forgotten. I can't find whatever it was I held on to for strength in this mental game. My anchor is gone. I lose it and do exactly what I shouldn't do again. Why can I not be consistent in doing what I know will weaken my OCD? And so I'd say this question, you know, courage, strength, motivation, uh, these are all kind of about the same concept, this idea that we have to feel a particular way so that we can do healthy things. 
And here uh, is something I think is really important to keep in mind with this, is that trying to feel a certain way so that you can do other actions is just the OCD pattern at work. It's really no different than somebody who says, oh, like, you know, before I leave the house, I have to feel safe. So I do some rituals, I engage in a bunch of compulsions, then I feel safe, then I can leave the house. Or I, before I go and meet people for the first time, I have to do a bunch of things, whether it's like counting in my head, drinking a bottle of whiskey, I just have to find that feeling so I can be myself, I can be balanced, I can feel right, and then I can go and do these actions. So really recognize that that, that is how OCD works. This idea that we have to control our internal or external experiences so that we can feel particular things, so that we can do the healthy things that we actually want to do. And you can see how that becomes a barrier. Because if you have to feel this particular kind of amorphous, you know, not totally clear feeling before you go and do something else, that's going to become a huge barrier. Because how do you know if you're feeling that or not? And your brain here, it wants you to do the compulsions. So if you can only do healthy things by feeling something first, your brain is going to make you not feel that. So when it comes to motivation, strength, courage, feeling right, whatever you want to call it, uh, personally I found it really useful to take them right off the table. Uh, I have that video on like, how do you get motivated to be OCD and I think in general, uh, motivation I always describe as a unicorn fart, uh, this imaginary thing that comes out of other imaginary things. And, and we just end up chasing this. So if I don't feel like doing something that I know um, is important to me, um, I'm gonna do it anyway. And that's really, in many ways, the whole practice of exposure and response prevention or acceptance and commitment therapy. It's really about exposing yourself to feelings you don't like and doing something healthy anyway. So take those same principles and also apply them to not feeling motivated, not feeling strong, not feeling courageous. It's totally okay to not feel those things and still do the healthy things you know you wanna do. And that, that is very difficult at first. Uh, but what you'll find is that the more you practice doing these healthy things, even though you don't feel like doing them, is that you'll actually start to feel motivated uh, all of the time. That's it for this uh, question and answer video. There will be more question and answer videos. Feel free to ask questions down below. Feel free to comment on uh, the topics that came up in this video. Because I mean, again, these are uh, just my opinions. These are not, um, this is not anything that's set in stone. Um, so this is more about having a dialogue around what works.